Hey ladies and gents, welcome back. This is going to be part one to what if Asta was a Naruto. So with that being said, make sure to like and subscribe because you know, I'm kind of just telling you to, you guys kind of have to listen to exactly what I say. Otherwise, why would you be subscribed to me? Wait, no, I'm telling you to subscribe. So does that, if I'm saying this, then if my subscribers are the only ones that, never mind, never mind. Just pretend like I didn't say that. Just like and subscribe because I'm telling you to. So also check out my discord. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And with that being said, let's just get right into the what if itself. So in this what if there is going to be a few liberties, I guess you could say that I'm going to have to take. For one, mana and chalk are gonna kind of be have to like be interchangeable, I guess you could say. Like Asta's still not gonna have chaka or any of that thing, I guess you could say. But a sword needs to be able to, like, cut chakra, I guess you could say. So, it's anti chakra, but it's still, like, the anti-magic sword, basically. So, yeah. He still has that. Obviously, he's gonna have to be able to get his grimoire, too, which, again, it's just gonna be a liberty. Just throw it in there, I guess. <laughs> so, some, like, warp is gonna come in from, like, where Asta and, like, Naruto are, and they're just gonna, like, fucking switch places. Naruto's gonna be shoved into the Black Clover universe. I was planning on doing that later on. That's why, you know, I'm doing that. But basically, Asta's just gonna get yeeted into the actual Naruto universe. This is directly after the Nine Tails got sealed within Naruto, so Asta just kind of replaces him. He's just sitting there. Minato's watching this happen. It's like he's literally about to die. He, he just sealed like Kushina's like thought process inside of Naruto, and he's about to fall over and die. And he sees his kid just get swapped with this other baby, and he's like, ah, "You've got to be fucking kidding me!" Before passing over and dying, he's like, he's kind of confused. He's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> so. You know, Asta's there, he's just like, he, he's born basically, we're not born, but they, they just get warped. They're, like, Asta's just in the Naruto universe now, and Naruto would be in the Asta, Black Clover, whatever the fuck you actually want to call it universe, but we're not really doing that right now. We're going to get into that in a, another what if later on in, you know, the future, whenever the fuck I decide to actually end up doing that. So, let's just like get into the future of Asta and exactly how this is going to go. So Hiruzen's gonna be looking at this kid, he's gonna be like, well, I need to put him somewhere, and he's looking at him, he's like, huh, he doesn't really look like me, Naruto or Kushino, hmm, this is a little bit odd, I, he wasn't expecting anything like that, but he's like, eh, whatever, and considering Naruto, or Asta is completely replacing Naruto, he'd be like, well, might as well just shove you in this apartment building by yourself, even though you're only like four years old, good luck, kid, you have a few dollars, and Asta's like, oh, cool. <laughs> so, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call him Asta, because like, you know, they, they didn't really have the chance to, like, where they would have had a chance to name him, but, like, uh, what's the point? It would just be, like, calling Asta Naruto. That just sounds weird. I don't like it. So, his name is going to be Asta, obviously. So, he's kind of like the Rock Lee, I guess you could say, of the Naruto universe, except for, like, a better version of it, I guess you could say, because, you know, he has the actual power to, like, back it up, but whatever. He's basically, like, training, like, all of his, throughout his young life, because of the fact that he does, like, literally just straight up doesn't have Chaka. Like, Lee, have tra Lee has Chaka, but he just can't really use Ninjutsu or any of that sort, but, like, Naruto, or Asta straight up just doesn't fucking have it. He doesn't have anything. So, he trains, like, immensely, like, just like he would you know, in the actual Black Clover anime, and he trains, so eventually, obviously, he would still be, like, this massive, like, buffy fucking little Chad man that he is, and he's probably around Lee's level in terms of actual, like, physical strength and everything like that. He might be a little bit slower than Lee because he may, he trained more so for actual sheer strength than actual speed, which is exactly what Lee did to, you know, he just really wanted fucking speed, I guess you could say. So, basically, Asta has a much po more powerful punch, but Lee is faster than Asta would be. But, yeah, that's basically what the difference is going to be, except for Asta is going to actually get the fucking anti-magic sword, so it's not really gonna, like... Th 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 that gap is going to quickly shrink, I guess you could say. <laughs> so, now, Naruto or Asta would actually end up graduating from... The academy and since he's literally replacing naruto we're going to place him on team seven with sakura and sasuke because you know he's literally replacing naruto so he kind of like it would make a lot of sense if he was placed on that actual team with because you know that that's just kind of how that kind of shit goes so with him being placed on that team he'd obviously like be asked to do his little introduction and to be like well I am going to become the Hokage, kind of like reminiscent of how we wanted to become the Wizard King and everything like that, because he wants to prove himself, he wants to, you know, do all this kind of shit, and Kagashi's like, okay, well, we'll see if you're actually able to do any of this, but good luck with that. Sakura's like, oh, Sasuke-kun, and Sasuke's like, okay, I'm just gonna kill somebody, and Kagashi's like, oh, that's a really nice goal you have, Sasuke, it doesn't 
It doesn't like sound like a bad childhood or anything of that sort. Have you you do you and you have a lot of fun with that. So obviously the bell test would actually end up beginning beginning next, and Asta would not go and actually hide. He wants to challenge you know Kakashi and test his own strength. So he like leaps at him and he's just like fuck you Kakashi and he's like you know he's punching him around and Kakashi's like oh he's pretty fucking strong. But obviously Kakashi would be more than powerful enough to take down somebody around Asta or Lee's strength. So he takes him down, and Sasuke would end up coming out, and he's just like, I'll help you. No, I'm kidding. He doesn't really say that, but he's like, he, he sees Naruto getting absolutely butt-fucked, and he's like, Naruto's stronger than me, so maybe if I try to help him, something good will happen. So he jumps out, and he's just like, starts fighting along with Asta and Sakura. At this point, it's just like looking at the two of them, and she's like, Oh my god, oh my god, my Sasuke Kun, she's, he's fighting all on his own. And, you know, not seeing Asta, apparently. She jumps out and she's like, I will help you. And she, she she tries to help, but she doesn't really do much. But Kakashi's just like, oh, not bad, not bad, not bad, not, not, not bad teamwork. And he's like, well, not good enough. And he gives everybody a little chop on the neck and they all fall out to fall down to the ground. And everybody's like, well, what the fuck? They don't know where Kakashi just went because he used the substitution jutsu and he's just fucking gone at this point. Everybody's like looking around. They're looking in the forest. They're like, okay, where the fuck did he end up going? They're, they're searching the little premises that they're at and they're eventually they stumble across him. But when they're looking in the woods, they run, they, they're running around, they see him and they're like, there he is. And they start running towards him and Kakashi turns around. And he's just like, later hater. He, he basically holds up his fingers in like a sign of peace before poofing. It was just a clone. And they're like, fuck. <laughs> that we, we were really hoping that would be him. As Asta's like walking around looking for him, he, he gets a little chop on the neck and he falls to the ground, almost unconscious, but he's actually still awake at this point. Kakashi would begin walking away, thinking Asta had actually been completely knocked out, but he gets up. He's actually really quiet and he stands up, not really making any noise. Kakashi wouldn't actually notice this, even though he does have, like, increased senses and everything like that, because, you know, convenience. And Asta would basically, you know, he'd charge at him. Kakashi would feel the little, like, amount of wind pressure and, like, the small amount of noise that Asta would be making around him, and he'd turn around and see that he's literally really close to him, and Asta manages to land a punch on Kakashi, sending him flying back out into the clearing, where Kakashi and Sakura see, and they're like, okay... This is our one and only opportunity. As they like both start charging towards Kakashi, he's getting basically surrounded by three different directions and he's just like, okay, well, good luck with this one. And he jumps up into the air and throws a bunch of shuriken down at him. And everybody's like, he's not escaping. We can't let him escape this time. Not again, not again. And they, they jump up and they're like, you're coming down with us, motherfucker. And Asta actually manages to grab Kakashi's leg and he yanks him back down to the ground and he's just like, oh, you're coming with me, motherfucker. And Sasuke manages to grab the bells after Asta manages to like hold down Kakashi for long enough to, you know, keep him, you know, held, I guess you could say. So they actually end up passing the bell test because, you know, TM work, and that was pretty good TM work. So they pass the bell test, and then they'd start their D rank missions, which would obviously get very boring, and I'm not really planning on covering them. They start their C rank mission after going to Hiruzen and asking for a better mission, so they get a C rank mission to guide basically Tazuna. So they actually would begin that, and they begin walking through the gate and begin walking outside of the village. With that happening, obviously, like Tazuna would get attacked by those two Chunin brothers, but Everybody would pretty easily defeat them. Asta doesn't actually have that, like, you know, moment where he doesn't react. And he and Sasuke both jump out and individually take down one of the two demon brothers. And with that happening, they continue on walking. Nobody would really notice the puddle, even though I, that happens before the demon brothers. I just kind of forgot about it, but nobody would actually notice that. So, massive sword would begin flying overhead at this point, and obviously everybody would duck out of the way, and Kakashi would begin fighting Zabuza. I'm kind of just flying over these events because Asta being here wouldn't really change too much because he wouldn't be on the level of somebody like Kakashi yet, meaning he wouldn't be able to fight like Taz or Zabuza or anybody like that, or at least not like evenly. So, Obviously, Zabza would, you know, he'd do his whole thing where he appears in the middle of them and he's like, okay, well, uh, he needs to figure something out here. And, you know, Asta's just like, I will help. And he pulls out a kunai and he, he tries to shank Zabza, who would just look down at this little kid. And he's just like, the fuck did you just try to do to me before whacking him with the backhand of his basically sword? And he's like, fuck you. Sending him flying away into a tree. Asta hits the tree and he falls down to the ground unconscious. But basically just incapacitated for 
at least a short segment of what is going to happen in this fight. So Kakashi would continue fighting with Zabuza before eventually the similar events would actually happen where he would get caught in the water prison. With that happening at, at convenient timing, Asta would happen to wake up at this point, and he sees that his sensei is about to get killed, and Sasuke and Sakura aren't really able to do anything, they're just standing over there. Naruto, no, Naruto, sorry. Also would realize that he has to do something, and this is where his grimoire would actually appear, in this moment of crisis, in this moment of need. With that happening, Asta pulls out his sword, the anti-magic sword, this being the first time that he's actually, you know, held it in this what if. So he picks it up and he begins charging towards Zabza, who would basically be like, the fuck did you get a sword? And what is that floating book? What the fuck? So Asta begins charging and he br brings his sword down with obviously a pretty decent amount of force and this would actually be enough to not only like put Zabuza off balance because Zabuza only really has one arm to in order to block the sword that Asta is swinging at him but it sends him completely like flying outside of the water prison where Kakashi is just like thanks Naruto before revealing his Sharingan and absolutely butt fucking Zabuza but obviously you know Haku comes out and he's just like I'll kill him and he you know pretends to kill Zabuza before taking him away Obviously, Kakashi would need to recover from his Sharingan use, and they would go to Tazuna's shack and begin training with all their new abilities, with Asta training with this sword, because obviously he doesn't really know swordsmanship. He would learn from Kakashi, because Kakashi, because Kakashi like, he doesn't really use a sword, but he obviously knows how to use a sword. He uses it in the war arc, he uses Zabuza's sword. So, he'd begin teaching um, Asta, like, swordsmanship and everything like that, of which Asta would improve massively over the three weeks, along with his physical strength and speed being increased, uh, pretty drastically as well, due to, you know, training with this absolutely massively heavy sword. So, with that happening, the weeks of actual training would be over, and obviously Asta would not be able to learn, like, water or tree walking without having, like, you know, chalk or anything like that. Obviously, once he learns how to, you know, use his, like, black demon fuck form thing, he'll be able to, like, fly and do all those different kinds of things that he could do, you know, that Asta could do, I guess you could say. So, with that happening, they would eventually go back to that bridge, where they'd have their next encounter with Zabuza and Haku. So, Zabuza would begin fighting Kakashi, and Sasuke would end up fighting Haku. He gets still caught inside of that, you know, the ice mirror thing, ice prison, whatever the hell you actually want to call it, and Naruto, or Asta, sorry, I don't know why I keep saying Naruto, would actually end up jumping in, and he's just like, I'll help you, and Sasuke's like, you fucking dumbass, you should have just stayed out there, you could have helped me a lot more if we were able to collaborate our attacks from outside and inside at the same time. Asta's like, oh, then I'll just go out, and he begins to try to walk out, but obviously Haku would stop him. So, you know, similar events would actually unfold. Sasuke awakens a Sharingan, and he's being able to slowly react to Haku's movement, seeing little blurs and trying to anticipate where Haku is going to show up. Obviously, similar events would actually happen, and he would end up throwing Sinbon towards Naruto. Sorry, towards Asta. Sasuke would jump in the way of that actually happening, and he's just like, no, and, you know, obviously that happens. So, with that actually happening, Asta, at this point, sees, you know, his friend, kind of, I guess you could say, his, I guess you could say rival would be a more, you know, it, it's kind of like his what he had with Yuno. I guess you could say. So it's kind of like that. He's, oh, he obviously gets really mad at this, and this is actually enough to awaken his demon form. With that happening, that chakra, or not, or it's not even chakra, the anti-magic, I guess you could say, would begin forming around Asta's body, and basically coat half of his body, along with creating a single wing. With that happening, Asta would swing around his sword. All of the mirrors around Asta would actually shatter, and Asta would charge forward. And he'd deal a slash down onto, you know, Haku, cutting him clean in half, with pretty much no difficulty whatsoever. With that happening, Asta's, like, completely almost raged out at this point, like, almost out of control, but not quite. Because we've seen Asta almost be out of control before, but that was only when, like, he was only out of control when the, like, the Witch Queen was actually controlling him. So Asta should be able to control this power. The only, like, thing, I guess you could say, with that it might be going towards the strongest nearby enemy, which would actually be Zabuza. With that happening, 
Alistair would charge towards him, and he'd begin slashing down uncontrollably, not really being able to control his actual power. Zabza would be having a very difficult time reacting to Naruto's speed and strength at this point. With every blow that Naruto's actually dealing, Hawk Zabza would be barely able to block it with his own sword, and each time it would actually like almost cut his sword, and he'd be like, "Okay, I need to, I need to do something about this." But while he's thinking about what he wants to do. Asta would actually regain his control over, like, his body and everything like that, and he actually can develop some strategies now, instead of just mindlessly attacking. With that happening, he begins developing strategies of how he's actually going to kill, you know, take this guy down, and he begins to swing at an overhead stroke. Obviously, Zabuza would bring, bring up his sword in a, you know, way to defend against this, but then... Asta kind of shifts his grip, and he be begins swinging it down and going up in an upward arc. Uh, and, you know, Zabza isn't able to actually react to this because he's not fast enough, I guess you could say. And Asta, you know, swings up and deals a massive cut to, you know, Zabza before he falls to the ground, bleeding from his chest with a similar wo wound to what Zoro actually had when he had that, like, massive cut across his entire chest against Mihawk that happening obviously Zabuza falls to the ground he's not really able to do anything now his like blood is gushing out of his chest at this point he's like Fuck that hurt like a lot that fucking hurt so Asta would you know undo his like weird like anti-magic form and he's just like what the fuck was that and Kakashi's looking at him he's like that must have been the nine tails fox still thinking that this is just you know, Naruto, I guess you could say. But it's obviously not, because, you know, you know anti-magic and Ninetales Chakra are pretty different things, I guess you could say, but whatever. So, they would end up, you know, you know whatever, okay, what is the gang leader's name again? I don't remember, it doesn't matter. He shows up and he's just like, ha-ha, with all of his people. So, you know, every they'd cut them down pretty easily, and they're like, okay, uh, we'll, we'll take you back to the Leaf Village, and we'll allow everybody to do what they want with you there. With that happening, they end up returning back to the Leaf Village. You know, Kakashi's like, okay, um, what, what are we going to do next? And, you know, everybody's like, well, we, we want to go on another mission. We need to make more money. And Kakashi's like, actually, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to do the tuning exams because I'm pretty sure you guys are strong enough by now, I think. They're like, oh, what's that? Kakashi's like, um, you're going to become tuning. It's, it's the next rank. And they're like, oh. Cool, let's do that then. So they would end up starting the tuning exam, starting with the written portion of the actual exam itself. Obviously, everybody would pass with Austin just not answering questions like Naruto actually would have done in the original, meaning that they actually do manage to pass the exams. Or, you know, the written portion of them. So the forest of death would begin next, but that's where I'm going to leave this part off. Sorry for the... I guess you could say shorter part comparatively to what I've been doing for the last week, but I think 18 minutes is good enough for my liking. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next part. Peace out, bye.